Sorry, I missed last week. I was sick. I'm still a little <coughs> coffee. Uh, I was traveling and I just could not get everything together in order to produce a video. I did record stuff though, and I did distribute it, but it was not this stuff and it was not to YouTube. So I'm, I'm still, my New Year's resolution of doing a video a week, I'm, I'm still there. And uh, what's a resolution if you're not gonna fudge it in order to work with reality? Earlier this week, I did a presentation at a Google Dev Fest about Puppeteer. And when thinking about what to do for a highlight this week, I realized I've never actually talked about Puppeteer, which is a fairly large portion of my life right now. So that's what we're gonna do. What is Puppeteer? Puppeteer is a browser automation framework for Chrome built on top of the Chrome DevTools protocol that allows you to drive Chrome with node scripts. Now, if you ever tried to automate a browser before, you probably pointed to something like PhantomJS or Selenium. Both great tools, but both have quirks that make them less than satisfying to use. Now, if you try to use Selenium, you might go to seleniumhq.org. As soon as you get there, you're presented with a question, which part of Selenium is appropriate for me? It's like, I don't know. I'm just trying to automate a browser. So if I want to create robust browser-based regression automation, no, no. Create big, quick bug reproduction. No, I don't want to do, I all right. I just, does download Selenium button over here. I can, I just will look for a quick start and I'll get going. Selenium standalone server? No, no, this is too much. Selenium client and web driver language bindings. Okay, I've got JavaScript down here. I'm gonna download, brings me to npmjs.org. This is okay, I feel comfortable here. I know how to use npm libraries. npm install Selenium web driver, that's perfect. Uh, you will need to download additional components to work with each of the major browsers. Okay, I, I can buy that. That makes sense. We want to driving. We, we want to drive Chrome. Get a Chrome drive. Holy, what? I download a different program for every single version of Chrome that exists, or I have to change it every time there's a new version of Chrome. I I don't know. I don't know if I'm okay with that. And then the the examples down here. It's like I'm I'm building. Uh, I'm getting a builder for browser Firefox, then I'm building it, and then I'm, I'm sending keys. And is this just a, a random semicolon lying there? What? Modify the environment? This is too much. It, Java. Oh, Lord, no, no Java. It's just, Selenium's great if you're trying to build out a, a scalable solution for automating a huge number of browsers remotely distributed uh, for automated tests, regression tests, a whole bunch of other things. It's really, really good, but it is so extremely heavy. Puppeteer, on the other hand, it feels like a regular node package. You import Puppeteer, you launch a browser, and bam, you're ready to go. The Puppeteer API is also very, very simple and easy to use. You start off with a Puppeteer library and you can either launch a browser or connect to an already existing browser. From there, with a browser instance, you can query the list of open pages or you can open up a new page. Page here is analogous to a tab in Puppeteer Lexicon. If within one page instance, you navigate to another page, it's not that you need a whole another page instance, your page is still the tab that has that, that page, the pages open. With a page instance, you can go to URLs, you can evaluate JavaScript within the page context, or you can query elements and get element handles. With those element handles, you can click on them, tap on them, type into them, whatever else. And with these 11 methods, uh, you can do a lot of what we're doing on a web page anyway, all day, every day. You're just opening tabs, you're clicking on stuff, you're going to URLs, you're evaluating JavaScript in the DevTools tools console, uh, and that's it. And there's a whole bunch of other things. What else can you do with Puppeteer? No browser automation example is gonna be complete without the example showing how to take a screenshot of a page. Here we're importing Puppeteer. We're launching a browser with arguments that uh, open up the window to a, to a standard widescreen size so that when we take pictures, it'll look like it was taken off of a laptop screen or a widescreen display or something like that. We're opening up a new page. We're going to a URL uh, that we're getting from the command line. We are taking a screenshot with page.screenshot. 
If you don't deliver that method a path argument, then it's going to deliver the buffer data representing that image, and you can write that out to standard out. Now with a script, it's just node screenshot.js, a URL that we want to take a picture of, and we pipe that output to something.png. Bam, easy as that. Extending that further, we can take screenshots of individual elements. Here we're mapping over a list of selectors and then we are taking a screenshot of each one of those selectors and then writing it out to some sort of generic prefix, a dash a number. So we can use this script to automate the screenshots of a bunch of elements on a page, which is perfect for something like documentation. If you're generating documentation, you wanna make sure that you have up-to-date images that represent the current state of the application you're documenting. Otherwise, your documentation is gonna feel old, even if it is up-to-date by the minute. You can use the script with node, space snap elements.js, pass it a URL, pass it a file name prefix, and then pass it an arbitrary list of selectors. It'll go through, go to the URL, and then output everything that we just uh, took pictures of. We got Amazon, we got a picture of the search bar, we have a picture of the navigation tools, and we have a picture of the secure sign-in. So now, what do I do with Puppeteer? I work at a security company, and I'm talking about Puppeteer a lot. I actually think Puppeteer is underutilized in the realm of supercharging your development environments. It is uh, headless by default, which is fantastic for things that you don't need to see a browser for but it's automating Chrome proper, the Chrome that we want to use on a daily basis. And we can use it to prep environments to be specifically what we need to develop uh, or to, to debug or troubleshoot or develop in certain scenarios. Let's say I want to debug a script. Take a look at a site like homedepot.com. It's got this script on there that is pretty aggressively obfuscated. They clearly don't want you to see what's inside this script. Well, we can write a tool that automatically intercepts uh, the arbitrary JavaScript that we specify, runs it through a command like unminify in order to have Chrome automatically undo a lot of this minification so that I'm using a browser in a way that uh, optimizes for what I'm trying to do. So here I've specified the URL pattern that I want to be unminified. Now in the browser without any sort of manual manipulation, I've got that script unminified, and it ended up being a, a fingerprinting script that Akamai injects, and I can debug it as necessary if I need to. I like breaking things. I like breaking things in creative ways that unlock some potential or power that the original developers didn't even realize they had baked into their application. So you know Electron, right? It's the Chromium in, in Node hybrid environment that a lot of applications are being built off of. Things like Visual Studio Code, Slack, Discord, Skype, all these things are using Electron, and Electron is Chromium in Node. So if we have a framework that automates Chrome, it might work on these applications. Uh, spoiler alert. This is using Puppeteer and automating Visual Studio Code. Now this is not sanctioned. This is not a supported, uh, the feature of either Puppeteer or Electron or uh, Visual Studio Code. But when you start to look at how you can break things or tie things together in, in ways that, that the original developers didn't expect, then you start to see possibilities everywhere. And then you can make your own uh, solutions that no one ever knew existed. So there's a lot of cool stuff and Puppeteer is really, really exciting. Recommend that you take a look at it, go through the Chrome DevTools protocol, go through the Puppeteer API. I've got a bunch of other videos on the topics if you wanna dive in a little bit more deeply, especially into the things like the intercepting and modifying responses. Um, so that's it, that's our, our weekly highlight. Uh, you can install Puppeteer off of NPM. Uh, I've got some links down below if you're interested. Uh, if you like stuff like this, uh, I'm, uh, I, I put together these things somewhat uh, frequently. I'm doing a reverse engineering web applications workshop in Atlantic City this weekend. So if you're in the, the New Jersey area, uh, poke me on Twitter and I'd love to meet up. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun and I like answering questions. I'm getting a lot of questions on Puppeteer. So feel free to reach out either in the comments here or on Twitter or uh, in email. So like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of these things uh, in the future. And I'll see you next time. Later.